This is the beginning of an editorial opinion that I'm forming about the situation now that Donald Trump has been disgraced by act of Congress. Um, when it comes to nonviolent people like myself, we are always told if something is done that is a crime to tell the police. I think it, we need to tell more than just the police because the police have old bias and are being retrained in new bias. Our government, in theory, being representative is one where what it means to be representative is to hear people and provide the best possible opportunities for good service that may exist and information to those people. There's some question whether our Constitution allows for the situation in Congress with Democrats and Republicans to be properly reformed to address the problems of the current day. What we saw with the acquittal, which was also rightly understood to be the disgrace of Donald Trump, was a new representation of what is happening by such individuals as who dominated the mon light throughout the affairs, this person Raskin. And it's important to understand what was going on simultaneously with this acquittal of Trump among them the COVID situation. Now, I was raised in a Jewish Holocaust survivor community. I had the unique experience of having not only been tortured, but mocked for being tortured. One of the things that I know about the United States is that, at large, the society is criminally insane. It was impossible to find anyone who would look honestly at the nerve damage and the neuroplasm that was impacted. It became routine to laugh at it and shrug it off. Now, one of the things I heard as a child growing up in a Jewish Holocaust survivor community were stories of people who came from Europe to America to warn about the concentration cramps and the treatment of the Jews. They weren't heeded at all. It's very likely that someday someone will unearth this YouTube video and point out that it wasn't heated at all. So the situation was anticipated by the people who tortured me and used me as a pornographic guinea pig on Mount Desert Island to rubber stamp the AIDS atrocity as a plan of retribution for sin. Now, our society has had trouble deciding which side Adolf Hitler is on in the abortion debate. Both sides say the other side uh, owns him. Well, no matter which side he was on, it's clear that Christians have abandoned us. For Christians have come on loud and strong in favor of the COVID bomb. Obama's lies throughout the atrocity of AIDS were a form of domination, switching to the new bias that we see with the so-called Green Party and their Black Lives Matters wing. The COVID bomb 
there was a story was kicked off when a black man got on the bus and kicked an old black woman in the face. The kicking in the face of the elderly is in fact one of the most important images of the Congress of the United States throughout the COVID tragedy. But there's another image that's important. It's this death in the family business. Many people said, oh, well, Joe, he's death in the family, Joe. Well, the evidence suggests that that's part of the plan. To institute a reformer who believes very strongly in Christianity as death in the family, Joe. For now, we all have death in the family. And the way to get people to accept the abomination is to normalize this death in the family. I don't know if Tommy Rankin, Raskin truly committed suicide, but I know for a fact that seriously Kennedy did not. She was murdered, and it was a long arm of this Jewish Holocaust survivor community who have long spread deranged rumors about me, which have totally discredited in order to sell sleazy pornography that they wired up to make mirth of the AIDS atrocity. Microsoft has been in on this. The voices of mockery that come from the laboratories of unprincipled and evil people, like Penis Gabriel of Genesis, throughout the whole affair, Richard Starkey, have been a sign that mockery of the victims was in the plan all along. So, when we look at what they've done and the abandonment of us by Christians, we need to question what it is we're doing when we don't take charge of this issue before Congress. What has happened and how have they subliminally persuaded us? Because they refuse to say a word. I've talked at great length with individuals in administration in places like Olympia, Washington regarding the script by Gay L. Burson that shows that the Texas school book that killed JFK was part of Adolf Hitler's appeal to redneck America and the nativists here through his minion, Ronald Reagan. It was, after all, a British general who spread smallpox. The British had an interest in fascism. Oswald was the namesake for the leader of the British Union of Fascists. That didn't come out in 63. So, when we're dealing with people who we like to think of as traitors, you have to remember that they aren't traitors to Hitler's Germany. They're loyal. And they won't be thought of among themselves as traitors to Hitler. They won't be thought of as traitors at all. They're not Americans. They're Republicans. One of the things that goes through their minds, of course, is the idea that they can promote what they believe in the name of old glory, if they get enough votes to do it. Raskin very subtly played the agenda of Biden in this matter. He brought up Bond versus Floyd. He said that the lawyers for Trump were desecrating, you know, the proceedings by raising an issue of Julian Bond possibly being in the wrong. Well, Bond versus Floyd is a very suspicious um decision by the Supreme Court, and Raskin calls it in their wisdom. Supposedly, from the story I got over the waves, Bond was refused to be given the oath because he didn't support the war in Vietnam, and Raskin says the Supreme Court, in their wisdom, said that a man can't um, be held to blame and refused an oath for a past opinion. It's only so he's endorsing the idea that if Bond the war was going on and Bond disagreed with it, he shouldn't be given the oath. That's very interesting when you look at what Pink Floyd did. Floyd. Floyd, they use Floyd a lot and Bond. 
he mentioned um, the equation master, Bob Moses of that movement, you know, in terms of this Bond versus Floyd. Bond and Floyd are both English symbols, James Bond and Pink Floyd. And people who've read the script know that the British generals didn't stop with smallpox in America. They were behind AIDS, too, in the Texas school book in the assassination of Kennedy. And they were almost certainly behind Bond versus Floyd because they have this idea that they're going to force C, which is what they call me, to embrace K, which is what they call the men who attacked me, in a reform Christendom over just normal pornography. It's just perfectly normal, you know, perfectly normal youthful sex. But they have this thing in Japan, a film called The Cruel Story of Youth, and they play this up. They have these stories of true cruelty of children on children crimes going all through America, and they've enculturated that. Chicago is a place which is torn apart by violence. What we saw in the insurrection resembles nothing so much as the Saudi Arabian production of comeuppance for Arab meddling, I mean American, American meddling in Arab Spring. And Trump was like Stalin inciting the Warsaw ghetto uprising and getting bored with it. No, they're just fluff, get rid of them, you know. The point is about these bestirances and insurrections that they're being manipulated for a purpose which is very different from the one people claim they are. When Floyd and Bond perform this equation for the black man, it was orchestrated by a black man kicking an old woman in the face. This is their idea of a new order. What they have is an equity scythe. They're going to come and exterminate hundreds and thousands of Americans. They're going to kill off our grannies. And we're not going to say anything. We're not going to, we're not going to say it's better to be poor and humane. And they trace this to the idea that, oh, well, Greta Thunberg is crying because there's too many people on the planet and the little ones aren't going to get a chance. Now, that's very sad. But we were saying that back in the 60s, too. And what they did was they streamlined sex. They didn't teach anything about sexual education and sexual responsibility to the people on Epstein Island who were being taken in for what came out on Mount Desert Island as to be a pre-planned AIDS attack. They waited until 2020. Oh, now that we have the science of COVID, we're ready to talk why. And you're supposed to think, oh, they're trying to save the earth. Well, they're not. Cameo in Prison's Disaster was something that Todd Clark said. He made a cameo appearance when they imprisoned me and took me hostage and ran the script by my neurologically comatose, traumatized child mind. So, you see the, the criminal insanity of this artist is at work. And he had something called Flame Over Africa which meant, you know, that was going to get hot, really, really hot. And snows of Kilimanjaro will melt, he was saying, you know. And we look at the men who attacked me. One of them was named Rod. Rod was also the name of a person who was expert in carbon. So these Christians who have abandoned us had this idea of creating a forcing house, of smoldering up the heat, and then forcing people to accept that they were going to be exterminated in the name of saving the earth. And I'm not joking. They made no real attempt to save the earth. What they did was they made a major push for a forcing house. That's what we're dealing with. And you're supposed to think, oh, well, they're doing it because it's necessary, because it save us from a worse evil in the future. It has nothing to do with that. These people claim to believe in God. They, 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 they never consider for a minute that the earth has intelligent design, that if we teach properly, that if we learn to get along and if we distribute equitably, we'll be able to survive and create 
a lifestyle that is in harmony with the earth. People have been trying to explain that for the duration of my life. I'm 60 years old, and only now does anybody give it any kind of credence. Why? Because of the business about Bond and Floyd, you know. KC is the walrus, is what that stands for. And if you go back to who they targeted, they targeted my father, for example. Now, he was on the Navy ship of George Bush. So you have Yoko Ono and Warhol aiming out to kill a serviceman from the Navy in World War II and then stamping his obituary with don't know who. And when you try to complain that you were tortured, who comes up popping up out of the Dono who hat is someone named Yusu Andor, Yusu the sender of the letters. In other words, come tell me what you feel guilty about, queer ball, so I can justify killing your pappy. And they have this person on Mount Desert Island named Gabrielle Yorganoglu, who steals lights from the park and brings them to my house and I have to take them back to the park. I mean, it's draining, draining labor of intimidation. And they have a neuroplastic in the psyche of their victim, Jorgana Glue. And they think this is funny, right? They have someone named Donaldo Gilligan who sings in a bass, like Diamond de Gullis, Donaldo Gilligan. And the people who had Epstein me as a child were also named Donald O. You know, which is like a symbol for Austria, which like Bond and Floyd is an English term in spy parlance for secret, like Oswald and Austria. Austria is Donald's secret, right? So you have Donna Who and Yorgana Glue and Nandura and all of the from Penis Gabra. Okay? And these British murderers in dating, and they flowchart the whole thing, what they call parallelogram equations. You know, the black man sends the white man, uh, Indian woman, so he gets the Japanese trophy. Ha, 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 ha. And Biden's going to make you swear to martial law and oath if you want to get married and have children. Otherwise, they're going to be a death in the family. And this is their mentality. Jim Morris was sent a picture of me with lots of staples in it. Kodak dated 1966 with a bicycle in front of a garage that was spray painted, I kid you not, I love Sarah Sarah. And then they used a Sarah on me. Mars Dan was the name of somebody who had a girl named Gabrielle Morrison in Pittsburgh. And Snow Dan and Bye Dan, Dan of Thieves, get it? They came in and Steve, Texas School Book, Jim Morris, to whom I sent this picture, who then covered it up and pretended he never received or he didn't know where it was or whatever he pretended, danced at Jack Ruby's Carousel Club. So these fallen women represented by Jack Ruby are like, are like the, the um, weird dancers who, that Amon Bowie and um, Michelle Obama conjured in the tapestry of the Taliban of Donald Trump's new changing ways in American society. And the outcome are voices of mockery. The targeting of people like Grot, the rise of insurrectionists against Congress. And, you know, the Saudi Arabian comeuppances for uh, spring. And who should be preening his feathers behind the scenes in the pedophile word of Pittsburgh with Catholic worker, but Martin Sheen. It's like Romulans have taken the West Wing. And they have all of these archetypes running around. So, you know, it's not just that they kicked an old woman in the face on the bus to make sure as the Outsiders was always something that Gail Burson, who wrote the Texas School Book, insisted I read, to make sure that I hated you. Is what it comes to, and that was then, this was now. So we've been abandoned by Christians, much as the Jews were abandoned by Christians, by people who want to make sure that they hated us. And um, as one of them, uh, Global Czar, says, um, because I know you.
and they're using deadly poisons. They themselves kept a scorecard and zapped at me, zapped at me, zapped at me, zapped at me, zapped at me with women growing up. It was their doing. And they say, oh, no, we can hold you responsible for what they did to me. You know, and in, in their order of the universe, that's just a wonderful performance to use America for. And, you know, you end up asking what gives, of course. I mean, that nobody can comprehend that the Green Party is part of the Axis and the Black Lives Matter is, is just the Hutus stomping the Tutsis. I mean, it's hardly a redeeming symbol of a young black man kicking an old black woman in the face. But that's what the whole situation stands for. They're killing our grannies. Don't you get it? Death in the family, Joe. You there? Don't you get it? People need to be taught properly.